What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm back out tonight again with Kevin from Small Plots. We are doing our second video, second night in a row. We're at a very interesting location. We are in a state forest that is called Clip Naki. It has some local lore. So we are allowed to disperse camp. These are designated campsites actually. Not much of many amenities here. Uh, so we may poke back into the woods a little bit because we are allowed to do that. And uh, I don't know, we're gonna get set up. We're gonna um, uh, do some exploring around and uh, talk to you a little bit about the lore that's associated with this place. Before we do any of that, I gotta take a little nip off of the old banana flag. <laughs> cheers right. cheers <laughs> <It's> vodka <laughs> mine is monkey shoulder bourbon again second night in a row second video in a row good stuff definitely better than uh drinking vodka neat Woo. Oh, yeah, I can make it so Kevin and I just kind of poked back into the woods here a little bit from the parking kind of campsite area there. It's all rocks and gravel and, you know, stones and stuff. And, and I just don't think it's, there's no trees for him to set up on for sure. And I don't know if that's going to be camp comfortable, me camping on the ground. So here's a nice kind of cleared out area right here already. So we'll go ahead and make use of this. And um, we'll go ahead and get that tent set up right here. This will be fine. Okay, here's the tent. I've got uh, everything staked out pretty well. That uh, other half of the vestibule is loose because when I zip it, it'll just uh, guide over to that and it'll just kind of be freestanding with just one stake there. I pulled out a couple more stakes, gave myself some actual airflow inside there. So there you can see from the back. Just sharpened up some little pieces of wood. Works fine. And then here's Kevin's setup. I'm a big front fan of using a pole like that. Um, give yourself some extra room. Kevin does that in a lot of videos. So he's got his whole setup here hammock and the whole nine yards. Okay, so the tent's all set up. We're gonna go get with Kevin here and we're gonna have him explain the local lore that's surrounding the place that has to do with the hairy women of Klipnaki. And then we're gonna go explore around and see what we can find. But before I do that, I gotta put my adventure hat on. Okay, I got my adventure hat on guys. We're gonna go through the legend or more so Kevin's gonna go through the lore here. Now, before we go to the uh, talk about the, the legend of the hairy women of Klipnaki, you thought I was ki kidding. It's, it's a real legend. It's called the hairy women of Klipnaki here in Klipnaki Forest. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna break into the beverage center a little bit. I got a, an old classic, a little bit of a space kitty here. And Sam? Local beer. I think I had this last night, but this is uh, Ruby Red Kolsch, Kolsch from uh, Genesee Specialty. All right, cheers, buddy. Cheers. Boop. Boo! <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> We're just in the woods, you gotta make noises. Call me. 
Okay, so the, the legend of the hairy women of Klipnaki starts in the early 1900s. Uh, there was a, an old country house, a family of three sisters and their parents. The, they had an agreement, the sisters and the parents, that if anything were to happen, they would meet up at a particular spot in the woods. Now, one night, the parents went out to the nearest uh, city for like an opera or, or a show, so, something, something like that, and they left the, the, the three sisters home. And there was a fire at the house. The fire burned down, and the sisters fled. They ran into the woods to go meet up at the place, the predetermined place that their uh, parent, that they had, they had agreed upon. It was very agreeable of them to, to meet at. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the house burned down. There was a fire in the house. No, the whole thing. Well, anyway, the, uh, so the parents never came because they were murdered in the... Uh, uh, either on the way to the show or on the way home. So either way, they're dead. That's funny. It's hilarious. And the sisters just kind of uh, started living in the woods. And they were very young. And they, they were kind of, they kind of raised each other and maybe even raised by wolves a little bit. Maybe some bear. Who knows? But anyway, these, 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 these girls grew up to be adults. But they weren't very civilized. There were reports of these hairy women, these hairy creatures jumping out of the woods and, and eating farm animals and, and, and attacking people and things like that. And they've, they've just been known as a local legend called the Hairy Women of Klipnaki. And every year in a nearby town, they have a Hairy Women of Klipnaki contest where they people dress up as, as hairy women and they win fabulous prizes. That's true. That's true. That happens. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to look for these hairy women. Apparently, they're still haunting these woods. Apparently they're still around, eating chickens and slapping people on the back of the head. You know, just causing mischief, just being generally not that cool. Tomfoolery. Tomfoolery. Uh, yeah. A couple of knuckleheads, really. Just a bunch of knuckleheads. Yeah, so we're going to find these knuckleheads, these hairy women of Klipnaki, and we're going to give them a, a what's for. All right? We're not going to do that. We're not. But <laughs> <laughs> we're going to run away if we see them, because I don't want my face ripped off. Yeah, they may rip off a face or two. <laughs> and if we find somebody else's faces, then we know we're close. Yes. So there's really nothing to do with Bigfoot. Well, it's, uh, they, they're kind of like described as like Bigfoot like creatures. You know, they're like in the woods, mm. kind of like, you know, like they're human. So it's not like technically like a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch, right. not like a Gigantopithecus or something like that, just roaming the woods. No, yeah. these are uh, girls, they're, right. like, they're women. Uh, they're human. They're human. But the tragedy of their life has kind of have, have made them supernatural a little bit. And it's, uh, it's a local legend that we're going to solve today mm. on Small Plots and Camping with Sam Bananas. Dun, dun, dun. dun. <laughs> All right, here we go. are kind of dark and creepy. I'm gonna go down that trail right there. It's kind of a trail. It's more of an implied trail. See if we can't find some bestial ladies. I feel like this is gonna be a true adventure because of Sam's adventure hat. Yeah. Very uh, Robert Muldoon of you. Here we are. We're gonna brave it. We're gonna brave it for you, for you, the viewers. Totally, totally spooked out right now. Oh my god! There was a rock here. Yeah. You think a hairy woman took the rock? Um, I would say if I was betting on it, I would say absolutely. Yeah, I think so. I would so. say definitely. I think so. I think it's pretty obvious. I would. Oh man, there's a lot of pine cones. That could be a sign. <laughs> I, I hear that uh, Sasquatch-like creatures enjoy a good pine cone. Yeah. Oh my god. And here's proof. A stick jammed in this log, surrounded by pine cones. I think they're trying to tell us something. Yeah, I think they are. I think this is a message. What is it? That this is the way to get to where there, you go to do the bathroom number two. It does look a little poopy. Oh my gosh, there's beer cans. 
it's uh, I think that some bush beer. That sounds like something uh, the hairy women of Klipnaki would enjoy, some bush beer. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Keystone Light. Oh my gosh, tent poles? Tent poles or fishing poles, and they're pointing in this direction. Oh man, I think we're getting close. Oh man, target practice. Ah, this is this is too much, guys. This is too much. It's too... All right, we're coming up on a just kind of like a random place with a bunch of giant boulders. Who do you think put these boulders here? Oh my God. See, let's see if we can get over here. It's looking a little, a little thick. Almost like someone doesn't want us to come this way. A lot of plants growing right here. Going that way. Maybe with this towel on my head, one of the hairy women of Klipnaki will confuse me as one of their own and take me in under their wing, under their hairy arm wing. Oh my god. I think these are hairy women footprints in this mud. They have to be. They have to be hairy woman footprints. This is real. This is real life drama. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Sam, look. An old rock fence. Really? Just going along in a line. All these boulder, all these boulders in a rollers, all these boulders in a row. There's Sam getting his inner clip knocky on. Whoa! I heard a knocking over here. Did you hear that knocking? No. It might be some clip knocking. Let's go. Let's go find out. Sam, I may have found their lair. We gotta go. We gotta go check this out. We got a layer situation. I may have found the elevator. The entrance to the elevator that they take down really? into their lair. Along this more of this uh, old dilapidated rock wall barrier here in this wide open pine forest full of evidence of hairy women of Klipnaki. And there it is. This is how they enter the earth. Probably, oh. probably is probably what it is. See, look, look at look at this. I mean, come on. It, it, it's literally uh, Looks like an upside down woman with her legs sticking up in the air. Yeah. It's obviously, it's like in Stranger Things. Yeah, this is obviously where they live, I think. It's pretty obvious. What do you think these fallen trees mean? <laughs> these? Do you think they're a sign? See how they cross in a V, like almost, almost just pointing this way. Very suspicious. Can I show you what I think this is perfect for? Sitting. Pooping. 
newspaper. <laughs> this is where Sam's gonna poop later. Yeah. Look at this ancient tree over here. There's no way it doesn't have mystical powers. Truly, truly a sign of Klipnaki. Hairy ladies. What's that? Ah, it's just some weird roots. Don't even worry about it. Gnarled and knotted. It's very quiet in these woods. Almost a little too quiet. I think they planted it, yeah. And now it's their best friend. I think maybe the signs are all there. The signs are all here. As the legend holds. Oh, you know what? Those are boobs up there. <gasps> oh my god, you're right. Whoa. So we're trying to investigate these hairy women of Cliff Knocky. Oh and man, oh you just can't, people just do not know how to pick up their freaking beers. Oh man. Keystone. Target practice. Oh, this is somebody's fishing pole? Yeah, it's like a fishing pole, I think. This is Kevin and Sam pick up garbage in the woods. Oh, I can never get it all, but... Um, you know, grabbing a couple pieces here and there definitely helps. So if you got a similar mindset like I do, think about grabbing a piece of garbage while you're out there because unfortunately we can't count on everybody that uses these spaces to keep them clean. If you are one of the people who do, very much appreciate it. Yeah, well that was fun. In all honesty, we had a, um, a heavy hiking day yesterday and there was a lot of back and forth hiking. And, um, and that trip kind of took it out of us, so we wanted to kind of do something. Do some car camping. Woo! Excuse me. And just have a little fire, have some, some beers with friends here. And, and, you know, we know we have a lot of uh, subscribers on, on both of our ends who like to see us get together. So we want to make that happen once in a while, definitely. So um, I'm going to get into another one of these Genesee Specialty Ruby Red Kolsch beers. And I think we might be getting the fire going here. Kevin wandered into the forest because nature called. And um, he will be back in a few minutes and then we'll get it squared away from there. Cheers, everybody. Sam and I are here now at this nice uh, kind of backwoods pond after our harrowing journey through the woods looking for the hairy women of Klipnaki. Maybe they'll be in this pond. Maybe they'll emerge like that movie. Uh, yeah, just kind of hanging out, very peaceful. There we go. Okay, well, there's a pond. So Kevin is out gathering up some firewood pieces from us. We got a bunch of like regular firewood that's in there, but uh, we will need more. We want to get at least around here. These weeds trimmed down, so I'm going to use my trusty uh, Sheffield machete here and just get a little bit of this out of the way. We don't need a brush fire.
it's not exactly perfect but that is definitely a lot better than what we were dealing with before unfortunately people just love leaving beer cans plastic that's a shame get these over by my car we are about to get rock and rolling with the fire there's no question about that Oh, the grass looks good. Looks better, right? Yeah. I guess we'll move these out of the way. Oh my God, the snake's back. Platform. <laughs> You finding some good dead stuff back there? Oh yeah, some spindly boys. <laughs> you always want to get those spindly boys. Mm -hmm. They burn the best. Yeah. This with the other pile is probably a good start. Ow, my hands are already injured. <laughs> All right, well, that's probably enough to, to get it started. I think that's good. Cool. Hey, y'all. Easy peasy. No, that's bushcraft. Yeah. <laughs> How about a new lighter at the store, by the way? Did you? Yeah. Guess we, I guess we won't have a chance to use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There'll be many more adventures. Yeah. That's it. And there you have a fire. You gotta get to the like. Set. Yeah. Oh god. Like I'm trying to grab the stick in good spots, and there's just like secret nobules. Yeah. They keep hitting me in the wounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You um. You know. I mean. You don't need a hospital or anything, but. Yeah. But you did sustain actual injuries. I get hurt every single time I go camping. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. No, like every single time. Well, it's not hurt, hurt, serious. Like I always have like some kind of scratch that's blood, you know, on me or something. It's not usually ever serious, but. I get uh, scrapes. Yeah. Scrapes and cuts every yeah. time. Yeah, scrapes and cuts. That's mostly what it is. No, nothing serious. This is probably the, wor the worst injury I've had camping, camping like in years. If, you know, not this ever. one? Yeah, on my finger. So it's not, it's not like too bad. It'll just have to heal, that's all. Yeah. I won't be able to play video games where the, the L2 and the L1 are required. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. I was out with my brother and my nephew and my ex-brother-in-law, nice guy. Mm -hmm. And we didn't film it for YouTube. This was like right in the very beginning. Yeah. And uh, I was trying to make like a skewer using a method I had seen the bushcrafty guys do. Right. Like yeah. you just like start splitting and then you just stop splitting and then you put a little twig in there and it widens it and then you sharpen it. Oh, okay. So I was trying to split it and I couldn't get it right and I was doing it in a way that wasn't particularly safe because I was trying to get the right angle. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised I didn't need stitches with how hard that came down on my thumb. Wow. Man. And my brother's an EMT, so luckily my brother was up there with us and he uh -huh. didn't even, he just, he just wrapped it. But he was like, I, he was, he sees stuff all the time. He's like, yeah, I, I think you'll be fine. So you have the Look. dust poof also. Yeah, right, dude, so dusty. Like, hey, by the way, I have chairs. That's a big, like, bag uh, yeah, of chairs. Yeah, it's definitely not good for, like, any kind of backwoods camping where we're not next to the cars. Right. Because we are kind of backwoods well, camping. In the back. I mean, we're out there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so we're out there, man. We're, we're surrounded by, like, thousands of acres of nothing but woods right now. Yeah, we're, we're in an area where, like, Rob Zombie movies get filmed and right. yeah. stuff. This, this, there's, like... Probably a population of like 20 within the, like 40 square miles. Right. 
We're remote. Very remote, yeah. That's perfect. Looking good. It was uh it was like it looked like just four headlights. I think yeah. You want some jerky? Yeah. Jerky. Is this like bacon jerky? Oh yeah, I didn't realize it until I opened wow. it just now. Go. Cool. Alright guys, so um, we came over here to this um, lake that's pretty much across the street. Yeah, so real, real close. Real, real close. close. Right to where we're, right, right where we are. So yeah. we're just going to try to do a little night photography and then uh, we'll head back over and start cooking. It's time to cook on the coals again. You know how we do it here on San Bananas. Just plop them right on the coals. That's all you need to do. It's the best way to cook. You guys bring cooking grates while you're cooking. That's not the way to go. You need the, the full on coal experience. Those are those hot dogs. I'm doing these hot dogs. Oh yeah. Plop them not. Plop, plop, plop them on. <laughs> Here we go. Now we just let them cook. Oh, so hot. Oh, so hot. Oh, the heat. Oh, the heat's getting me. Oh, the hot heat. Oof. Oof. Ooh, the hot heat. Ah! This is the bad part about cooking on coals. <laughs> maybe like a stick or something, right? Oof, maybe. <laughs> but also, I don't feel like finding a stick. Sure. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're just in the forest. There's no sticks here. <laughs> we don't make sticks here. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. Now we just wait. wait some Beautiful. More. We're almost done, a couple more minutes. Here, come close, because I don't. there's not like a lot of like I'm gonna poke, poke. I need to like poke them and put them. I can't. I can't. Like oh, bring me them. come close. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. It's tough to bring them to a place. Okay. Ah. Oh no. Okay, I want to burn the napkin. Ah. Boop. All right, go. You do a similar thing, but put them into tortillas. Get out of there. Okay. <laughs> that. Dos. Mos. <laughs> oh, God. These ones are pretty charred. <laughs> That's how I like them. Oh goodness, Kevin. There's like a little hole over here. Okay. And that's how you cook weens on the fire.
Kevin, how are those dogs? Fantastic. Fantastic. How are yours? I'm about to take my first bite. Oh boy. Oh boy. Did I give you the right ones? You have two cheddar dogs? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mmm. That is absolutely delicious. Nice. Mmm. We'll finish this and get back with you guys in a bit. Forget mm. about it. Hey. Hey, forget about it. All right, everybody. I'm tucked into the tent, nice and cozy here. Um, had a great day, great hang with Kevin. We had a nice dinner with those uh, cheesy brats, and it's been a great hang, but I am ready to get some serious uh, Zs here. Um, and I'm not talking about on sorry, I'll tell you that. We'll check back with you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, everybody. Kevin beat me up. Uh, that's not what I meant to say. Um, <laughs> Kevin beat me at getting up again this morning. Um, but I'm up and at him. I think we're going to get a little coffee. We're going to get everything torn down. And, and we're going to get heading back to uh, um, whew, to our uh, respective homes here. Because uh, got to get back to got to get back to real life here. So... Um, we'll get the ball rolling. He's like on Instagram and TikTok and stuff. His name's Cooge. This stuff is pretty good. Bustello. Yeah. See, you are an interesting cat because you gotta have your nice pour over coffee. Because it's the way I make it at home, so it's like. No is it really? Yeah. So it's like no concessions out here. Well, yeah, that part isn't isn't what's interesting. What's interesting is that coupled with a plain hot dog and a tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> no condiment or anything. Toothbrush. I can stir it with a toothbrush. All right, good morning, YouTube. Got some coffee going. Kevin's got some coffee. Cheers. I had to explain to Kevin that those were squirrels. That sound that was being made. And... <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kevin was just uh, telling me. Um, I don't know if I had heard a squirrel make a sound like that. Yeah, I don't know if it, it's, it's real no loud and annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they were right next to his uh, hammock uh, super early this morning. Oh, yeah, they were keeping me up good. Yeah. We're going to get some coffee in us and get... Um, our, our our tents and everything torn down and then we're probably going to uh, bid a fond adieu yep. until uh, Kevin and I get together on that uh, sweet, sweet collab of a next year. Indeed. Ah, ah. Please advise your current location, my wife says. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay, guys. 
Um, we are all packed up. It was, uh, you know, that's a, that's the fun thing about car camping, which I think I might, you know, start working into the schedule once in a while. I got this one now with Kevin. I got the other one in the thunderstorm and everything. And, uh, once in a while, it's nice to do this type of stuff where your car's right here. Bang, bang, bang. Very convenient. Very convenient. You are just like packed and ready to go so fast. So this has been another excellent adventure. Another, <laughs> another. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> another uh, uh, Kevin and Sam chapter in in the books. In the books. We got another two into our belts and what have you and what they say. Appreciate everybody watching these videos. If you like this one, if you liked the last one, you know, we've got we've got another one uh, up with uh, Hidden Waterfall that we we head back to. Um, so secret, so tender. So secret, so tender. Not very, you know, flowing, you know, but yeah. a little bit. It, it was, was water falling. Was, yeah, it was water falling downward yeah you know but <laughs> yeah if you like this one go check out the last one please as always go check out uh, small plots with kevin um and kevin does regular camping he does stealth camping he camps with his buddies he does like a once in a while he's done a canoe he does urban exploration he he's got a whole gamut of he's got something for the whole gang for the whole there. gang yeah you're gonna love it yeah, <laughs> you're, really, you're really gonna love it. I can honestly tell you, it's all it's cracked up to be. I guess that's it for us. Thanks so much for everybody for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Adios, skis. High five. Yeah! Oh, I love you can do better. Yeah! There we go. <laughs> <laughs>